I want you and the camera to tell me how fair that is. You gotta do what you gotta do for the money, I guess. Austin, your deal is most borderline mediocre I've ever experienced. Taylor, do better, honey. You, you with me? Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Heika, if you are new here. Today's video is a very, very special video. It's a very important video. It is about the truth about Baylor University. Okay, part two. I've done this video on my channel before, months ago in the summer, and it did really well. Like, I have not seen views like that in my entire life, and you guys really seemed to like it and liked the information that was given and like wanting to know more about the school and all that. That stuff so I decided to do a part two a little bit more in depth to give you guys a little bit of an insight about what Baylor is like if you decide you want to come here or if you're already here and you want someone to relate to in that sense hopefully I give y'all the tea you've been asking for it really isn't tea I really actually hate using that word I've never used that word to describe something and now I really um regret everything right now anyway make sure to like comment and subscribe while you're here let's get into the video so the first truth about Baylor University is that it is not as hard to get into as you think yes like not everyone's going to get into the school the acceptance rate is not a hundred percent personally for me when I was applying to Baylor University two years ago I actually knew little to nothing about the school when I applied and the only reason I even did apply was because they had a free application fee it was one of the Christian schools schools that popped up on Google when I searched up Christian schools but nonetheless um, I'm here so if it wasn't for the fact that the application fee was free I wouldn't be here right now that was a god move right there over the past few years the acceptance rate for Baylor has increased dramatically and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we're getting a little bit more recognition we're winning in the major sports teams we have here so we're starting to gain a little bit of notoriety a little bit of popularity you know what I'm saying we're kind of a big deal or whatever um, I can't blame nobody you know what I'm saying like <laughs> I think because of that and the fact that we're like gaining a lot more accolades like we just became an R one school which I put the definition of what that means right here but I'm sure it has to do with like research and development and all those things we have a lot more of a reputation now and so I think because of that a lot more people want to come to the school and because Baylor likes money they want to accept more people and so the acceptance rate when I applied was in the 30s range I think it was around 30 to 35 I'm not sure I'll put it up on the screen but now I think it's around like 60 or 70%. That's a big jump. For those who are looking to come to the school, like this is their dream school, like they wanna come here, like definitely apply, like just apply. I literally applied knowing I was gonna get in, not because I thought I was smart or anything, but because I thought Baylor was easy to get into. I didn't really think much of it when I applied. And so I just threw my ticket in there and then wasn't surprised when I got in because I didn't think it was that hard of a school to get into. Now there's even more of a chance for more of you to get in if you want to. So definitely apply, don't stress about it. Like, and if you don't get in, God has a plan for you. So trust God and trust his will for your life. Just apply, just try, there's no harm in trying. I also think though, because of that, the consequence of accepting so many people in such a quick amount of time is the fact that like, Baylor doesn't know what to do with themselves. This past year, they accepted so many freshmen to the point where the dorms have maxed out in terms of the amount of people that can live there to the point where people are living in off-campus apartments and hotels that the school has bought to be able to house those extra people that weren't able to get a space in the dorm which is unfortunate like if that happened to me because I was only a year before them if that happened to me I'd be pretty devastated but one of my friends and I know a few other people were also like bribed to leave the dorms to make room for the amount of freshmen that were coming in yeah it's become really overcrowded and I didn't think Baylor prepared themselves enough for this amount of people to come in but you gotta do what you gotta do for the money I guess okay another truth about Baylor University actually doesn't have to do about Baylor University itself but the city that it's in and that is Waco Texas so for those who don't know Baylor is in Waco Texas right in the heart of Texas we're the best city out and no, I'm kidding 
I'm just kidding, okay, don't quote me on that. I know I didn't have a good impression of Waco when I came and even before I came, like I felt like there wasn't a lot to do, but the truth is that there is quite a few things to do in Waco, you just have to be creative. In one of my previous videos that I made a while ago, that was also a pretty popular video, I talked about how Waco has nothing to do here, except for Magnolia and I said I think Melody Ranch or something. Since being here for a couple more months and really getting to explore the place out, like there's a lot more to do than I originally thought. So I just came up with a list of ideas to share with you guys so that you can get your creativity flowing, like get your friends out there and go do something because there's a lot to do in Waco and that helps out because like you don't have to go to Austin or Dallas to find something to do. You can stay right here in your city and find something to do. So I created a list on this handy dandy notebook of things that you can do while here at Waco. So some of those things include a girl's trip to Magnolia. Waco's home to Magnolia, established by Chip and Joanna Gaines. They're a big deal, but we have that here in Waco. It's pretty nice, like it's a nice aesthetic and everything, and so it'd be good for photo shoots or if you just wanna like go and shop if you have the money for it, cause those things up in there are past my budget. But another thing you guys can do is relax at Lake Waco. So we have a lake called Lake Waco, in Waco, Texas. A lot of people go there to just relax, be one with nature, do very peaceful activities. I personally like doing activities like that where you're just chill and not doing much. You can hike at Cameron Park, which is a nearby park off of campus. We also have the Dr. Pepper Museum, okay? Anyone who is obsessed with Dr. Pepper can go to the museum and tour it and like learn more about the origins of the Dr. Pepper soda. You can study at your local coffee shop. We have a few around campus like Pine Wood, Dichotomy, and Common Grounds. For those who don't have a car like me, Common Grounds is literally walking distance. It's right across the campus near Coconut, where I lived last year. You can go house window shopping. So this is one of my favorite things to do. I love looking at houses that I don't have, but I will eventually live in one day. So sometimes my friends and I, we go to some of these more extravagant, wealthy neighborhoods and just like tour the house, not tour the houses. We like window shop and look at the houses there and envision our lives in the futures when we hope to own our own houses like that someday. You can visit some abandoned buildings. So I haven't personally done this, but I'm hoping to do this very soon. It's a pretty fun time if you go with the right group of people and that's something I've been wanting to do. So I'm gonna get back to y'all on that one. You can go to church. You can have a day or a night on the town. So Waco, like Waco downtown, is not the most aesthetically pleasing. It's not your San Francisco, your LA, your New York, Austin, your Dallas. It's none of those places, okay? But there's still, you know, a little, like a tiny nightlife, okay? Like it's a little, you know, walk around and it ain't much, but you could still do that and make it a fun time if you go with the right people. So personally, my favorite thing to do is take photo shoots in different places around Waco. I love doing photo shoots. And so I usually would go to Cameron Park. I hope to do more of that this semester. Waco does not have the best versatility or diversity when it comes to things to do around the city. But if you have the right people and like you guys are willing to like step out of the box a little bit, you can make it a fun time. Oh my gosh, I literally almost forgot. We literally have Melody Ranch. I can't believe I didn't even mention that in this video. We literally have Melody Ranch across the street, not across, the street but like we have Melody Ranch here in Waco and that's like a country dance club it's like line dancing and dance floor the first time I went to that guys I was like, I have to come back. I went four weekends in a row, like my very first semester here. And then I haven't gone since. So it's been like a year since I've gone cause you know, I was getting a bit tired of it, but it's really fun for a first time, especially for, if you're not used to like the country atmosphere. I'm from California. So that was a very new experience for me cause I'm not around that. It was fun. Like I had a good time and I hope to go back soon. So the third truth about Baylor is that we actually do have some diversity to an extent. So let me explain, okay? Cause I'm already dying, like it's not funny. Keep it together. For those who know a little bit about Baylor, Baylor is a predominantly white school. For those who care about the fact that it's a predominantly white school, yes, this is true. 
For me personally, it wasn't a big deal. I tend to gravitate more towards people who like share my same beliefs and values more than like who share my same skin color. Like to me, that doesn't really matter. There are ways to like find people that you can relate to or have similarities to. And that's literally through joining clubs and organizations or groups of people that share your same values and beliefs and attributes or whatever applies to you. I found that those clubs and organizations that have those group of people, like it makes you feel like you're not as much of a minority as you may truly be. You know what I'm saying? Because you're surrounded by people who share your similarities that you're looking for. I would suggest you need to join some clubs when you get here and you won't feel as lonely. I know a lot of people struggle like the first few weeks of going into college, like making friends and all these things, but that's where you have to be willing to like step out of your comfort zone and like try out these different things. If you want to find your people, you have to go out there and find it. So when I first came to Baylor, like my priority at the time was looking for people who shared like conservative views and like had a conservative ideology. Like I joined clubs that cater to those type of people. Through that, I made a good amount of friends. And like through that, I made friends with their friends and with their friends as well. That was my way of finding the people that I wanted to bond with and that I wanted to make connections with. There are a lot of clubs and organizations here on campus that cater to these different types of groups that someone may be looking for. I think in Greek life too, they have stuff like that as well, but I'm not so sure about that. I'm not in Greek life, so I don't know. Definitely put yourself out there and you will start to find your people and you won't feel as as like isolated after that. The same goes for Christianity. I think Baylor caters to a predominantly Christian audience as well because it's a Christian school. For those who aren't Christian, like you will find that there is a handful of people here who aren't Christian as well. There's people of all different faiths and religions here. Like they aren't the majority, like that's just what it is, but like they are here. So like you will find that here. You just have to put yourself in those spaces to where you will find those people and through that meet other people like them. So this one is gonna be a long one and that is that another truth about Baylor is that their COVID policies are the most inconsistent, the most borderline mediocre I've ever experienced in my life, which probably says a lot. And I just came from California, like for those who know about California and how their policies are there too, it's a mess. If you're at Baylor University, you know, you wanna be mad. You wanna be angry, but you're just disappointed. So let me go over some examples to give you guys an insight as to what I'm saying. So while we've come a long way from 2020, when we had mass police, we had to wear masks everywhere. Like it was locked down, shut down type of campus, you know? But now it's like, now it just doesn't make sense. I'm talking about it doesn't make sense for either side. For people who are for the mandates and for the regulations, they can also look and see that these policies are very inconsistent and unprincipled to that. So the first example is the fact that Baylor, when we came back this semester, imposed the rule that masks are to be prescribed in classrooms and labs and any other indoor spaces where social distancing is not appropriate or something like that. Here's the problem with that. If masks are only applied in the classrooms and nowhere else, I'm talking about like a lot of people here don't wear a mask outside of the classroom. In libraries, you won't see many people with it on. The sub, which is our student union building, it's like every other building but the classrooms that you're in, you don't have to wear a mask in. And it, to me, makes literally zero sense. Even in the classrooms, a good handful of professors don't even care if you put it on or not. Like, they don't care. They won't tell you anything. Like, there are definitely some who'll be like, you need to put that on right now. But, like, there are some who just don't care if you wear it or not. And it, it gets to a point where it's like, it's not even about your health. It's not even about your safety. It's literally all a performance. Like, it's all a performance and it's all a show. And it's a way to virtue signal to show like, oh yeah, I can comply with the rules. I'm complying, I'm respecting you and I'm respecting. It's not about like, oh, I'm wearing this because I really truly believe it's gonna protect me. Like what was that for? Like, what does that even mean? You know what I'm saying? Or, or like when it's time to leave, like everyone's taking it off. It's all a performance at this point. You know what I'm saying? It's really a tragic time. Compare the minutes before the professor walks in the room to the minutes after he walks in the room. See how many masks come up after that. Like it's like, oh, now, professors here and now it's time to wear it. If it was really about your health and safety, then you wouldn't, it wouldn't matter if he was in there or not. Or when it's time to go, like people take them off as they leave. And it's like, 
do we really believe that what we're doing right now? Like, do you, does anyone else see that? We have to wear it in the classroom. In the libraries, you won't see people wearing it. Football games, you won't see people wearing it. And you can imagine how close we all are to each other. So it's like, what does that rule really help? or protect at that point. Another example would be the attendance policy. So I'm in the business school hoping to declare a business major by the end of the semester. And there is an attendance policy. I don't know if this applies to the whole school or just like people in the business program that you have to attend 75% of your classes in order to pass the class. So if you miss more than 75% of your classes in the duration of the semester, you will fail the class. For a good amount of my classes, that's about seven or eight classes to miss. Let's Let's say you test positive for COVID-19. Baylor enforces that you have to isolate for five days, okay? You, you with me, everyone with me? In that case, right, you would think like, oh, I tested positive, wasn't really something I can control that I got sick, I have to isolate because it's what I've been told to do. You would think those absences in those classes that you're gonna miss would be excused, right? They ain't excuse. So that means if you get COVID twice, right, or something like that, and you miss like a total of 10 days within the semester because either you got COVID or you contact trace with somebody, those are unexcused. And those count towards the absences that will eventually lead you to fail the class. How fair is that? You tell me. I want you and the camera to tell me how fair that is. I think that's really a very um, illogical rule and very unfair. And I don't entirely know how isolation works if you're contact traced. I'm pretty sure it's the same way. Another example would be that if you happen to be one of the individuals who tests twice a week, then you are yearning and waiting for the day that they completely eliminate this policy. I've been waiting for this day for quite a bit of time. It's not because it's inconvenient. Well, it is inconvenient. There is no purpose for the rule. Let me tell you why. Unvaccinated students have to get tested twice a week. But at the end of the day, the fact that we have such easy access to the vaccine now, what purpose is having the unvaccinated test twice a week serving. Who are we protecting the unvaccinated from? Ourselves? Like, what, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm getting frustrated. This is what I do when I get frustrated. Because if the vaccinated get the vaccine, they're protected. The unvaccinated have made their own personal choice to not get it. Are we protecting us from ourselves? Or, and they can't use the excuse that they're protecting the vaccinated from the unvaccinated because they're already protect it. So then what are we doing this for? Like, I just feel like it's a big waste of time because at the end of the day, who are we protecting these people from? Who are we protecting the unvaccinated from by doing this? Who are we protecting the vaccinated from by doing this? It makes no sense. No sense. I think it's all a money incentive. I think Baylor gets a lot of money from the government to the point where they have to comply with whatever mandates or regulations that they impose on these institutions. I guess that's just what it is, unfortunately. But I think that whether you are for like mandates and regulations on this virus or you're not for it, like both can see like and the regulations are just not consistent to either one. You know what I'm saying? And I think they're trying to cater to both types of people and they're just not doing a very good job. So Baylor, do better, honey. You know, I believe in you. I believe in the school, you know that. So do better. So the last truth I have about Baylor University is that with prestige comes pretension. And here's what I mean by that. Baylor, I think, if not the nation, then definitely in Texas, has a very prestigious image. I mean, we're a Christian school, we're private, we're expensive. I think with that comes like this prestigious, like we are that school type of ordeal, which hey, I ain't complaining about that. I think with that, you tend to have students that go here that think they own the place and don't have to answer or respect or acknowledge people who they believe are not gonna serve them or beneath them or stuff like that. So I run into those type of people enough times here to where it, it is there. They are definitely the minority. I've definitely met more kind-hearted, wholesome people than not. I've experienced it the most when I'm working. And so I've touched on this a little bit in a few of my other videos. I work at a dining hall on campus. And so when I'm working, that is when I experience
is like the most of those type of people. People who don't acknowledge you, don't know how to say please or thank you, or, you know, manners, basic things, point to food, like to tell you to like give it to them instead of like asking for it. Things that like I never thought I would see out of grown people. And it's fine, you know, I can't control that. I can't control my circumstances. It's just like, you wish you wouldn't have to deal with it. I'm serving food or whatever. I'm in the Mexican Southwest station of the dining hall I work at. There is a girl that walks in and I give her the food. I serve it to her and all these things. I think we had tacos that night or something. She asked me the question. She goes, do you guys have queso? We serve what we are given that day. Like we don't have any control of what we serve to the students because we're just serving what we're given. So we didn't have any queso available for that day. And so she goes, do you guys have queso? And I'm like, no, I'm sorry. We don't have queso. Like it's whatever, whatever. She goes, can you make some? And I'm just sitting here like, you know, this isn't, you know, five-star restaurant. We're serving students. We don't have the ability to go above and beyond to make you a special meal. And so I'm looking at her like, no. And she was like, you know, giving, giving a little face and all that. And I'm like, you know what, that's fine. That's fine. Like at the end of the day, people will ask for ridiculous things or ask for more than we can give them. You have to realize that we have hundreds of people to feed a night. We just can't do special accommodations like that. I mean, we can do gluten-free, we can do no peanut allergy stuff, we can do vegan, but we're not gonna like sit there and make you a five-star steak. I saw you, Ooh, it's a chia pet. Is it a cat? Why didn't she come in? <laughs> so cute! And we got the cat jammies! Cat city! <laughs> I actually can't. Isn't that so cute? I can't, I can't lie. It wasn't the highlight of my night, I'll tell you that much. But that is all we have for today. Thank you for staying till the end if you did. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, got more of an insight of what Baylor's really like. I do plan on making more videos like these to come in the future. Until then, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until, until then, that's a wrap. So, um, no, 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 no. Ah, I'm so nervous. Like, why am I nervous? Why am I nervous? Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. I'm going through it today, people. We ain't gonna talk about it. We ain't talking about it. <laughs> I hate doing videos here because I get nervous. I've totally just blinked out. I'm just, I'm just a really dark human being. Like, you know, I want the video to be light, have good lighting, but when you're a dark human being, that's very, uh, that's very challenging to figure out. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe while you're here. Now, that's rude.